um, I devoured every possible thing I could get my hands on. And I would have to say that from the age of 16, 15 and a half, 16, John, I have never done a single other thing in my life. I've never got distracted. I've never, I never had a plan B. Like I just said, OV the OG. I mean, you've been in this space for a long time. <laughs> Would love true. to really kind of hit some high notes on on how you got started and and just your background, your history, maybe some, you know, where you where where you made changes along the way and where you are now. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to this. Well, yeah, John. Wow, um, it has been a long time. It's actually been close to four decades and. Wow. Um, it's surreal to me, to be honest with you, John, um, when I look back, because I can remember things like they were literally yesterday. And but it's still very difficult for me to wrap my mind around the fact that I've been doing this almost four decades. And I'm constantly reminded by the depth of my experience and how many years I've been doing this uh, with virtually uninterrupted in any way. When, um, you know, I'm called upon to add to, to um, when I'm called upon to talk about other people in the markets that I started with, and I realized I've lost them all. Like the vast majority of people are gone. I'm like one of the only ones from the OG years that are still here. Um, when, when you know, did spreading you get the gospel started? of training. When did well, you get started, man? Four decades. You know, long I'm going to go, I'm going to go all the way back. So my father was a taxi driver who got his business to the point where he owned his own taxi company, very small, just a few cars. And he drove one of the special cars. And my father had this, John, my father had this special client. We lived in Brooklyn, New York at the time. He had this special client that only he would take care of every single day. This was a Wall Street guy from our area. And my father would drive him down to Wall Street every single day and actually pick him up and bring him back to Brooklyn every day. It turns out that this guy was a very serious gold bug. Now, we're going all the way back to the beginning of the 1970s. I was three, four years old at the time. And he impressed upon my father, um, you have to really start investing in gold for your son, your son small. This is going to be life-changing. He, he got my father to understand or believe that at some point in the near future, the, um, the ceiling that the U.S. government had placed on gold um, uh, due to the agreement all the way back in the early 1950s, when the petrodollar, when, when the dollar came, when the dollar became the world reserve currency, um, partially backed by gold, gold was... Um, fixed at a $35 an ounce price. So anyway, to make a long story short, this, this gentleman convinced my father that that was going to break. And while he couldn't promise when it was going to break, he felt that when you artificially keep a market capped um, mm -hmm. and prevent it from moving, when the cap is released, it will make up for all that was lost during its period of imprisonment. And that was his theory. And it triggered my father. So he encouraged my father that if you can find a way to at least buy an ounce of gold every single week of your life until this happens. Well, I don't quite know how much my father bought, but he did for years. And just as he said, um, I believe that date was, it's special to us. Um, August 15th, 1971, President Nixon takes us off the gold standard, um, which in a sense is America's first real official default, but it's not marketed or couched that way. Mm -hmm. But the effect that it had on gold changed my family's life. Do you understand? In a short period of time, gold went from $35 an ounce, what my father had been accumulating at $35 an ounce for a long time. Um, it went from 35 to nearly $1,000 like that. Unbelievable. And this was a life-changing event for me. Now, I was too young to understand, I mean, why we went from, why, why my friends changed, why our home changed, why our cars changed, why my clothes changed, why my schools changed, why did, our, why did my life change this so dramatically like this? And 
later on in life, I began to understand in my early teens that my father had this huge, big, giant gold play that changed our lives forever. Mm. And I'm like, well, as I began to delve a little bit more into what he did and how it happened, I realized that my dad had dwindled a good portion of the wealth that he had accumulated with that one big play, trying to duplicate it again. And that's when I began to be gripped. I began to realize, John, that look, if one act, one investment, one play could change a family's life forever that way, then what would multiple plays over a life or hundreds of plays or thousands of plays over a life do? Is this something that I could do with my life if one thing like this, one decision had the effect that it had on my life? What if I could get this to a place where I could make multiple decisions like my dad made and at the same time, not have to dwindle what I've made off one lucky play, be good enough at it to just duplicate it over and over again. And that sparked my desire, 13, 14 years old, I want to do this. When I found out there was a job called a trader, that was it. I gave up everything in life, John. My, my parents had invested from the time I was three years old into a, a professional piano career for me. I had some talent in that area. I went to a special school for, for, for piano protégés. My parents had teachers fly in from all over the world. I was being set up to be a concert pianist. At the age of 15, I dropped it all at the behest of my mom, my dad, everything. I stopped practicing, which I was doing anywhere between six and 10 hours a day. Wow. I was playing concerts throughout the United States with this special group of children uh, um, of young pianists. Mm. And, and my, you know, I, I was settled to go that route until I got bitten by the bug. And while my parents were very, very upset, with my decision to really take my life in that direction, I always tell them it's my dad's fault. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy our content, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to like our videos. Also, check out tradingsim.com forward slash blog for more content. That's so interesting, man. I mean, was yeah. were these just conversations that he was having with this guy, like in in the taxi as he's driving, and he's like right. in the back seat saying, "You need to buy gold, man. You need to buy gold." Here's so why. they they were they they were my father and my mother, and this gentleman. They were avid chess players, wow. and so he would sometimes come over for dinner, and he would knock down a chess game with my mom and dad. Every time he came over for dinner, I just remember those moments. How like, cool is that? Isn't that crazy? Isn't that that's crazy? So, that's so cool. But you know, I you know, there is a special place in my family's heart for this gentleman, which I, I'm not allowed to say his name, but um, he really had a huge, profound impact impact on our lives. And I would say that indirectly, he's one of the reasons that I am a market participant today. And he and my dad are one of the reasons why, throughout my entire career, I've pretty much been a gold bug up until recently yeah. um, where I've abandoned gold for Bitcoin instead. But um, I think that's the gold 2.0, but, and more, but um, it, it has always had an important part in my life. But I then took that, I took that passion and desire to just basically throw myself into the markets in every possible way I could. I, I, my mother was an assistant librarian. I grabbed every financial book I could off the shelves. And I was fortunate enough to be able to do that and order books and not have to take them back on time because my mother was in the library system. And um, I devoured every possible thing I could get my hands on. And I would have to say that from the age of 16, 15 and a half, 16, John, I've never done a single other thing in my life. I've never got distracted. I've never, I never had a plan B. I never did something else. I never took a break. I never took a vacation from this. I never got to the point where I put it aside and returned back to it. This is the only thing that I've ever wanted to do in my life, my entire life from the age of 15 and a half, 16. 
and it has been the same up until this very day. And I will tell you this, there's not a moment that I don't pinch myself that I look back, John, and I realize that I've lived such a, an incredibly privileged life, despite the fact that those first years were extraordinarily difficult for me, um, as they are um, with most people, I think, trying to get their gain their footing in this space. But um, I look back and I, I feel blessed because I've been able to really do what I feel that I was born to do from a very early age without ever deviating, ever. You know, Crazy. that's what I was just about to say. That's a, that's a real blessing because you think about how so many people just kind of, I don't want to say flip flop, but you know, they go from one thing to the next and it's like, what do sure. I need to do with my life? You know, sure. what, um, you know, is this the career that I want to be in? You know, that sort of thing. So it's, it's really, really kind of cool that, that you found yeah. that thing. Now I have a question. Um, sure. You said you were a very disciplined pianist and believe me, like I, I did seven years of that myself with my, oh, really? my own okay. mother, just forcing me to sit down. You understand. And, and, but I'm curious, did that teach you? Because when you think about that, a lot of, a lot of piano practice is just, just repetition. You know, it's repetition. Like you got to learn this song and, and it, you go over it and you go over it and you go over it and you go over it. I'm wondering if you learned and, and did your parents teach you any sort of discipline um, from that early age that has kind of helped you develop into the, the trader and the educator that you are today? Well, I think what you're really asking, has music really had some, for, some effect on where I am today? What I do has, did it contribute to my, sure. my being a, 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 a somewhat successful trader? And I'd have to say yes. Um, uh, in, in a variety of ways. Well, first of all, as it, as it relates to my parents, I think that what my parents, by forcing me to, to practice six to 10 hours a day, depending upon whether we were in the summer or during school hours, um, I think that built in me a very, um, a very sound work ethic. Um, so from a practice point of view, um, it's just, I just took it on. And as a kid, I did what I was supposed to do. I do feel that uh, to a certain extent, I lost a portion, I lost a big chunk of my childhood. And so mm -hmm. that's why I continue to, I, I'm very immature and, and almost childish now, because I sort of lost my childhood early, um, just to my, my, my parents dream of me becoming this um, great uh, uh, concert pianist. But also from a musical point of view, I think there is a, I, you know, you, you, as a musician, you see, you understand that there is a there are mechanics that can serve as the foundation of your art, but at the same time, it is an art. Mm -hmm. And so, to be one hundred percent technical will never lead a musician a musician to being great or even above average. That the technical aspect is the beginning road to becoming a master of the art. It is the beginning. It is not the end. It is not technical proficiency is not the end. It's the beginning. And so um, I understood that just like music, that playing the markets um, doesn't have a technical prescription, just like music doesn't. You can start off with a prescription, um, very much like learning how to ride a bike. You can start off with the prescription to learn a to, to learn how to ride a bike. But at a certain point, there's an art element that kicks in. And I think that not only goes for trading, it goes for anything in life, but my intimacy with music and playing the piano made me understand the distinct difference between those two. So I remember this transitional point in my, 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 my journey in the piano where something clicked and, I, and it stopped being me playing something and instead of something almost playing me i remember this transition it was that transition from being a technical player to an artistic player where i could play with the notes and then i went to this other level with that that also led me to um i think that had a had a, a had a had a huge profound impact on my trading as well that 
not only did I reach a point with my piano playing that I could play with the notes, I could, I could dance with them. It wasn't just following sheet music, right? Um, that I could put my soul into it. And it was very different. But also I began to realize at the higher level, John, that music is in the spaces. It's not in the notes. See, the technical version of playing music is to play the notes. Yeah. But really what gives the notes their beauty and their eloquence and their life-changing capabilities is the spaces, the silences between the sounds. Because if you had one giant sound without a space in between, it would be freaking annoying, right? Sure. So you need spaces of silence at different intervals to give the notes this beauty. And yeah. when I realized this in music, it took my whole art to a different level that I'm really playing the spaces. The notes are interrupting the space, the silences. It's not the other way around. Well, if we take this to trading, yeah, there's a point where I elevated my trading with that realization as well, that I am a technical, I'm, a, I'm pr primarily a technical trader. I look at bars that represent um, periods of activity between buyers and sellers, these bars. So if it's a two minute bar and there's a two minute bar of activity, there's a beginning of that two minute period and an end of that two minute period. Let's call that two minute bar a note, like a musical note. And then another note starts, but there's a space between all the notes. In fact, the notes are laying on top of one giant space. When I begin to see the mark, when I begin to see the spaces mm -hmm. between the market's notes, it all freaking tied together. And it That's was brilliant. like this 3D, 3D deep insight into market movements. I could, I could feel the soul of the market. I could feel um, like at my, I, I'd inserted myself into the market's blood flow. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that comes from music. That comes from that realization from music. You know, so yeah, it's tied around. My mother calls me to this very day. Oliver, when are you going to stop playing video games and get back to your music? Right? She still thinks I'm playing video games. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, mom, I play a keyboard of a very different type um, today. But maybe one day, you know, I keep the hope alive. One of these days. That's, that's really cool. I mean, that analogy, that analogy yeah. is so spot on. And, you know, yeah. I think even people who may not be musically inclined can appreciate that, that it really is like, you know, you reach that level where you, you feel the market, you know, you're just in tune with it. There's, there's harmony. And, and I'm thinking about um, one of your, your YouTube series that, that you put out on trading the open like a boss, which was, ah, yeah. was actually like really, um, you know, one, one, of my, one of my favorite series ever. Awesome. I mean, just the way awesome. that, uh, awesome. the way that you talk about that, I was literally sitting there while you were describing the piano notes and thinking about the series that you created there where, you know, the notes and the spaces in between, and we're actually layering limit orders up there. Cause we know it's going to come and then it's going to fall. And there's this ebb and flow, you know, so that's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's really cool. I love how you put that.